to another episode of Rob's Coffee Journeys. Today, I will be sampling the coffee that you just saw me preparing in the intro, which is a geisha varietal that was grown in southern Taiwan. Taiwan, sort of an up-and-coming source of coffee, also has a lot of um, roasters that are gaining acclaim, um, but it is still a fairly small production site. Uh, the southern part of Taiwan is kind of right in the tropical zone, as I've discussed before on this show. Coffee, of course, a tropical plant, um, typically only grows in the tropical regions. Um, Tropic of Cancer just cuts across that southern tip of Taiwan. Now, you can grow coffee north of the Tropic of Cancer. I've had coffee from Nepal, I've had coffee from California, so it does happen, but the most favorable conditions for coffee growth are within the tropical region. So this does kind of... Uh, this does just make it <laughs> under the wire. Um, like I said, geisha varietal. So geisha, Ethiopian heirloom or land race coffee, depending on which descriptor you choose to use for that. Both of those are in pretty wide circulation these days. Not really widely cultivated um, at all until about 15 years ago. So it was transplanted from Ethiopia to Central America in the 1930s, 1940s back when they were making uh, a big collection of older heirloom varieties and, and trying to transplant them to Central America and see kind of what else they could get going. Because of course, uh, as I think I've mentioned before, there was um, kind of a genetic bottleneck. And really there is a genetic bottleneck in widely cultivated coffees um, around the world. And that's been a problem for decades as far as certain types being more susceptible to leaf rust and, and other uh, diseases of coffee in the coffee plant and, um, you know, people trying to work out what else can we do um, because we've, you know, really narrowed ourselves into just a couple of varieties of coffee that grow everywhere that we grow coffee. And, you know, now these are being attacked by these diseases and, you know, we don't have a lot we can do about it. Um, so there's been a lot of crossbreeding, hybridization, and, you know, checking in on kind of the old Ethiopian heirlooms. Obviously, Ethiopia being the original source of coffee is where the genetic diversity is the highest. So, um, that is where Geisha originally comes from. Uh, Geisha is a region in Ethiopia where this originates, um, but still not widely cultivated there, or at least not for, not for export. Um, so again, 15 years ago, Panama is where it really kind of exploded from and people discovered that it had this really incredible cup quality. Um, it was, you know, not grown widely before that because the trees themselves, not high yield, kind of uh, brittle, difficult to cultivate. But um, it was found that at high altitudes, they produce really, really incredible cups of coffee. Um, you know, they're known for kind of their sparkling quality. That's an adjective you'll see a lot applied to geisha. You know, the, the fruitiness, the floral, uh, really aromatic coffees. So Panama still kind of ground zero for the, the geisha movement, such as it is. Um, that's where you see kind of these insane prices, like $1,000 a pound you've seen for, for some of those from, uh, from Panama. But it's kind of spread throughout Central America. I've had... Uh, I think I've had Costa Rican geisha. I think I've had Guatemalan maybe geisha. Um, this one, Taiwan. Now I assume this is kind of by way of Panama. I, I don't know for a fact where this was kind of originally sourced. I doubt that it went, you know, Ethiopia right to Taiwan. Um, Panamanian geisha, sort of um, a little bit of an animal unto itself. Like it is a bit different from Ethiopian geisha because it's, you know, been growing in, uh, you know, a completely different continent for decades and decades. And so there's probably been, you know, some just kind of natural um, hybridization, some some changes to the genetics. So I believe it is considered a, a slightly separate um, varietal at this point from the kind of original Ethiopian geisha, but obviously directly descended from it. Um, so, that being said, I assume this is kind of a Panamanian geisha that was transplanted to Taiwan to be grown. So, um, it is cooling down, so I'll be able to try it uh, in just a couple minutes here. But yeah, so what, what would I expect out of this, right? So, geisha, 
again, um, known for its its fruitiness and, and floralness. And this is a honey processed coffee. So that means, again, I've discussed this before, but just, you know, to go over it, um, honey kind of the middle of the three major processes for um, producing coffee uh, after it has been picked. Um, so of course, dry process, coffee dries in the fruit, wet process, wash the fruit off. Honey process, you wash the fruit off, but you don't fully wash the pulp off. So the fruit is removed, or so it's, sorry, it's pulped. Um, but then some of the pulp or the inner, the mucilage remains on the bean. Um, so you still have some of the sugars from the fruit and the other material surrounding the seed uh, remaining on the bean as it dries. And so that imparts a little bit more of that sweetness that is not necessarily there in um, a fully washed coffee where the entire fruit and everything is removed and the seed is just dried by itself. Um, but it does not have the, you know, the big, big fruit notes of natural. So the farm that this is from, I'm probably going to butcher the heck out of this because I don't speak Mandarin. Um, but it is something along the lines of uh, Cho Chu Yuan, something like that. Cho Chu Cho Chu Yuan, something like that. I apologize. <laughs> that was probably terrible. But it's Z H O U space Z H U space Y U A N in uh, the Latin alphabet, obviously not how it's originally written. Um, again, somebody else could say that way better than me, and they should, um, but I'm the only one here, so I gave it my best shot. All right, I think we're getting pretty close here. One thing that I don't know is the altitude um, that this was grown at. I don't think they have really super high altitudes there in southern Taiwan. Um, so I would assume this is a little lower than some of those Panamanian geisha farms. Um, but Taiwan also an island. So you do have that. I've talked about island coffee before. You have that kind of surrounding climate. I, I watched a video at, I believe it was the same farm, but certainly a coffee farm in that southern region of Taiwan. And you could see they have like the foggy nights and stuff. So that is what you're looking for as far as those cooler nights um, to help that coffee cherry develop a little more slowly and to make the more complex uh, flavors. Really let those sugars develop. So... Let's see. You get a little bit of that, um, that natural fruitiness, but it's not big, just a little bit. All right, well, let's give it a shot. I hope it's at a, hope it's at a drinkable temperature and I don't burn my tongue. <laughs> It is at a good temperature. <laughs> kind of a, hmm, kind of a caramel sort of note, kind of towards the back. Um, didn't hit super aromatic or flavorful. Um, but sometimes that, that happens. I have that kind of thing where, I mean, you ever eat something and like the first bite you take, it's kind of like, mm, okay. And then you sort of build a little bit as you have to have more of it. Um, that often happens for me with coffee. Like it's not always the first sip. It's just like, boom, boom. sometimes, not that often. So we'll keep going, obviously. So, 
Not per se surprising, since this is, again, an island coffee, probably a little bit lower um, altitude. Not, like, powerfully acidic. Um, it's not not bright, but, you know, it's not really bowling me over with the acidity, which, by the way, is not really a complaint. I'm just noticing it. Um, you know, I don't mind a, a mellower cup of coffee. Um, I mean, when I first started getting big into specialty, I did not like super acidic coffees, and I've really kind of come around on them, but I'm totally fine with a more mellow cup of coffee that is not just, you know, the sides of your tongue are just flaring because it's so acidic. And there's definitely some acidity there. I'm trying to think of what I would compare it to. It's definitely kind of citric. Kind of a candied note there. So it's almost like a, it's almost like a candied grapefruit acidity kind of. There is a little bit of a, a slight bitterness, not, not overwhelming, but slight. So th that's what kind of makes me lean grapefruit as far as deciding how to characterize the acidity. Hmm. I like one of those sweeter lemons. Like slightly sweeter, right? Like a Meyer lemon. A little bit sweeter. And I will say, one thing I don't get a lot out of this is anything particularly floral. So like I said, geisha, usually known for kind of the fruit and floral notes. Um, there's definitely some nice kind of sweet fruitiness in here. Um... Not overly so. And it kind of fades to, again, this sort of caramelized sweetness, so a little, um, you know, Maillard reaction style, um, which some of that might be the rose. This is a light rose, so it's definitely not, you know, weighed down by its rose level. But you get a little bit of that roastiness. Um, but some of that could be the bean itself, just with that kind of that natural um, sweetness just being affected by the roast. Yeah, I mean, look, this is, this is a nice cup of coffee, for sure. Um, I am enjoying drinking it. If you said to me, this is geisha, um, and I didn't know anything else about it and I tasted it, I'd be like, or like if you, you know, set four cups of coffee in front of me and, you know, three were just kind of normal, you know, typica or whatever. And then you had this one and you said one of these four is geisha. I mean, maybe set next to like three typicas or three straight bourbons, this would stand out. Um... And this is one reason why people do cupping tests. If I had several other coffees next to this, it's possible this would stand out more. As a morning cup of coffee, I'm not necessarily getting strong geisha vibes out of this. Um, again, it's good. But not necessarily in a way that makes me go, oh yeah, the famous geisha beans, you know. I mean, it has kind of a heavier body. A geisha, in my experience, tends towards that kind of lighter, almost tea-like body in a lot of cases. This is definitely a little heavier, a little more syrupy. Now, maybe some of that is the fact that it's uh, the honey process, right? But I don't think so, because I'm pretty sure I've had honey process geisha before, and for that matter, natural geisha. Um, and it didn't really do that. So I have to think probably some of that is the terroir coming in. Again, that lower altitude, you're just not getting quite the same level of, you know, formation of the sugars, development of the sugars, um, kind of development of the acid profile to really make this kind of light, bright, fruity floral coffee. This is a denser, 
fruity and sweet, but not light and not really floral. Um, you know, and less acidic cup of coffee. Now again, I'm, that's not a complaint. It's a good cup of coffee. It's very good. Um, but if you are coming in expecting a certain thing from Geisha, you know, you might be kind of like, well, is this what people pay, you know, $1,000 a pound for? Like, this is, you know, it's a good cup of coffee, but, uh, you know, it does not necessarily stand out among the specialty pack in the way that a really high-end Geisha is supposed to. Now, this is not a $1,000 a pound variety of Geisha, so fair enough. Um, but you hear Geisha, you expect certain things. To me, this doesn't quite get there. Um, but again, as a cup of coffee, totally good. So that's it for this episode of Rob's Coffee Journeys. And I don't want to leave it on too kind of weird of a note or critical of a note. This is a very, very good cup of coffee. Um, when you say geisha, you expect certain things. And to me, this does not hit a lot of those things. Um, it is pretty different from what you expect out of a Central American geisha, again. This is not a Central American geisha. For that matter, if this was brought straight from Ethiopia instead of being a transplanted Panamanian geisha, that would be even something else entirely. And maybe that's the case, I guess. I don't actually know. Um, and perhaps that could explain it as well. Um, I think it's probably just that that Taiwanese terroir is pretty different um, from where Panama tends to grow its geisha. This is not $1,000 a pound, so, you know, I don't think I should be expecting a $1,000 a pound experience. Um, again, it's quite good. I really don't have any complaints about it other than you say geisha, I expect a little more floral, lightness, brightness, not a lot of which is present in this coffee. But it's a good cup of coffee. So, you know, if you're intrigued by the idea of Taiwanese coffee, I say go for it because the coffees that I've had from Taiwan, I've had one or two before, um, have been good. You know, uh, are they the best examples of the varietals that they're producing that you've ever had? I mean, probably not, um, but they're still very good and you know, I think trying new sources is always fun. It's one reason why the show is called Rob's Coffee Journeys. Uh, so Taiwan, you know, another fun, interesting place to get coffee from. And hey, it's good coffee. It's just not the most geisha example of geisha.